Hi everyone, this is Laura Hammock from the Marble Jar channel, and in today's video I'll present the second part of my tutorial on workflow before it became series shortcuts. It didn't change much aside from the rebranding, so the basics are really exactly the same, but I will point out some differences as we go along. So this is the second video in a three-part series, but if you want to know more about what changed with series shortcuts, go back to the first video. Okay, here's the tutorial. Just remember that a workflow is the same as a shortcut in today's app. So in the last video, we went over the basics of the workflow app and automation. We talked about the screen setup, what a workflow is, and the different types of actions, get, transform, and share. In this video, we'll dive a bit more into the nitty gritty areas of inputs, variables, debugging, adding workflow items to your home screen, and automation for the Apple Watch. Here we go inputs. So as we talked about in the last video, each action is kind of like a tiny machine, taking an input, doing something to it, and then producing an output. An input can be almost anything. It can be the current date, stuff that's copied to the clipboard like a URL, or a paragraph of text. It could be the output from the previous action, like a PDF file or an edited photo. Or it could be a piece of information that's asked for when the workflow is executed. For example, in this workflow to add a new calendar event, you can see that there is only one action, add calendar event. There is input into this action, but you can see in each of these fields when it's set, it is set to ask when run. So let's go ahead and run it, and you can see that it's prompting me to fill in the information for event title, start, and end date. So this action is getting its input from ask when run which brings us to variables. So variables are pieces of information that you're gonna to want to use later in the workflow. Sometimes when you're gathering lots of pieces of information, you can't always pass them directly to the next action as input. In this case, you need to set variables, which prompts the workflow to store these pieces of data for later use. Then you can call on them later. So let me give you an example. This workflow is called estimate time travel. It pulls a list of today's events from my calendar that have a location listed, and then it asks me to choose from this list of events. Once I've chosen the event, it pulls the location. Now I can send this info directly to the next action without having to set it as a variable. However, I'm going to need this piece of data again in another part of the workflow. So I set it as a variable and I named this variable location. So I'll use this variable name later to pull it back into the workflow. Setting a variable essentially sets aside this data to be called later, kind of like putting it in a word bank. Okay, so let's just continue to walk through this example. The next action uses the location get travel time from my current location. And then the workflow shares this information with me in the form of an alert. You can see that it is using the input from the last action in this alert. It will take you input to get there right now. I didn't have to set that as a variable since it's coming directly from the action prior to it. But look, the next action is going to need the location of the event again. However, it isn't coming from the action prior. So I needed to get variable from the variable bank location and then pass it to the next action. Show directions using Google Map um, to that address. So let me run this workflow for you to give you an idea of how it works. So did you see why I needed to set a variable in this workflow? For variables, the two important functions are set variable, which puts the variable in the data bank, and get variable, which brings it from the variable bank and adds it back into the workflow as an input. You can also just call up these variables within actions. Actions are, are like little machines, right? So taking input, processing, and then producing output. But many times, you can add your own rules to the action to refine it. For, so for example, in this workflow, I'm sending information about a halfway point via email. Earlier in the workflow, I've asked the user to choose a contact. I've extracted the email address from that contact's details. And then I set that email address as a variable. In the send email action, when I put my cursor in the from field, a bunch of variables come up to choose from. The ones in green are system variables. In other words, they're always available. You can always plug in today's date, use the input from the last action, or use whatever's in the clipboard. Or you can choose to ask when run, which means to prompt the user for an answer when the workflow is being executed. The variables in blue include the variable that I set, email address, so that I can choose that variable from here. The others in blue are part of magic variables. So magic variables almost do away with the need to set variables manually. Why? 
the workflow automatically takes the output of each action in the workflow and it sets it as a variable automatically for you. For example, the halfway point was produced by the get halfway point action and the details of contacts is actually the email address that we extracted from the contact earlier. It mostly eliminates the need to manually set, set variables at all. Instead of setting the email address variable, I could just pick this magic variable details of contact and achieve the same effect. If you're curious about which actions produce which variable, you just have to push this magic wand and it will show you how each variable was produced. This magic wand is also super helpful if you aren't clear about what input is being passed into your action. It will show you that too. Debugging. Inevitably, you will run into issues when you're creating more complicated workflows. They will get stuck or produce something you weren't expecting. Two actions that might help you debug your workflow are quick look and show alert. If you insert these actions into the workflow where things are going south, they could give you some additional information about why the workflow isn't working properly. For example, this is a workflow that is working properly, but if I put the quick look action in here, I can see exactly what information is being passed from this action to the next. Workflow items to home screen. One really nice feature is the ability to add specific workflow items to your home screen. That way you can execute frequently used workflows with one tab. For example, I have a workflow to email a note to myself that I have added to my home screen. In order to do this, go into the gears icon while you're editing a workflow. Once you're in there, you can edit the title and change the icon and its color. You can even choose a custom image or a photo for the icon. Then choose add to home screen choose the share button, and then add to home screen, and you now have a new app icon. Add to Siri. So this is a new feature for Siri shortcuts. In the same screen, you can choose to add the shortcut to Siri, meaning that you can now launch it using your voice. If you choose this, it'll give you a suggested command and allow you to record it so that you can use that voice command to launch the shortcut later. You can also choose two other ways to launch the shortcut through the widgets that appear on the swiped lock screen and on the share sheet, which appears when you hit the share button within an app. So I'm bummed that we lost the ability to launch um, from a button on the Apple Watch, but I am hoping that it comes back in a later update. Join me in my third and final video of the series when I walk step by step through a more complicated shortcut. Comments are always appreciated and thanks for watching.